I'm going to take this and cut out all the parts where I messed up and trim it down a little bit. And then this is going to be like an overarching why crafting is important, how to understand crafting, and then why PD2 crafting is so much better. So we're going to go over crafting. When we talk about crafting, what, what do we really mean? Well, basically what we mean is creating a new rare item in the game out of a, a base set of items requiring gems, jewels, and runes to get a specific desired set of affixes. Everybody knows level 92 as a minimum for crafting caster amulets, faster cast rate amulets, because then you can get plus two to skills and 20 FCR and a whole bunch of good stats on it, right? Higher level means stronger and more affixes. People probably don't want to go through and read all of this and all of these calculations. I am going to go into some detail because it is really important, but you don't really need all of this unless you're aiming for very specific affixes to be available on the item that you want. Now, I've said affixes a lot, and some people may not necessarily understand how affixes get onto items themselves. Luckily, we have a really great resource. It shows you all of the affixes that are available, both prefixes and suffixes. So if you have like a ruby small charm of good luck, you will have a small charm that has you know, plus two fire resistance on it and magic find on it. The way that affixes work is that they come along with a level requirement and they can either only be available on magic items or be available on magic items and rare or crafted items. And not only that, it goes a little bit further and there are specific restrictions. So a crafted item or a rare item can only roll up to plus two to either a skill tree or a character skill level. So you can't have a yellow amulet that has plus three to traps, but you could have a magic amulet that has plus three to traps. Well, how do I find that out? So let's go, let's look up traps. We have three prefixes. You'll see that plus one to traps is available on rare and magic. That's what yellow means here. Rare and magic amulets at level 20, but only magic grand charms starting at level 50. That means that the grand charm has an item level of 50. The reason why that looks like that is because there's no such thing as a rare or crafted Grand Charm, but it's the similar principle here. You'll also notice that plus three to traps is only available on magic amulets, circlets, and katars. So there are some restrictions, right, when we're talking about affixes and what they can be on. If you don't want to sit here and do the math yourself, there is a website that you can go through and you can generate or calculate the chances of you getting whatever affix you want, whether it be magic, rare, or crafted, right? And it goes by different things here. So let's say I want to make an ax. I click an ax, and I want it to be uh, an Eton ax. The reason why the base is really important is because of its quality level, and we'll go over that in a quick second. But I want to make uh, a crafted Eton ax, and I want it to have all these different affixes uh, blah, 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 right? I want them to have all of these ones, and I click the Calculate button, and there's a 0.0058% chance that if I were to identify an item level 99 at Nax, I will end up with these affixes on it, right? So this is a really good resource. We can look at that in a little bit. But what did I mean when I said Q level, quality level? If you look at this item, there are two really important things to look at. The item level, which is the top value, and then you'll see at the bottom level, just above the orange, the affix level. There's a great equation that you need to look at to understand what an item's affix level is inside of here. Now, all this boils down to your item will have an item level that's based off of what monster drops it. It will have a Q level, which is specific to the base. So, you know, regular boots have a Q level of three. Q level is specific to the base item. To find the affix level or What's the highest level affix that can generate on an item? You have to calculate this. Calculation is really simple. Calculation is very simple. The A level, the affix level of an item. Affix level is equal to the I level. Right, and here 
Here, I'll do, uh, I'll do this. Hold on. Eye level. Eye level is the level, the monster that dropped it. And then you also need Q level. Q level is inherent value according to base item. Okay. So your affix level is equal to your eye level minus one half of your Q level. And this rounds down. Okay, so if my A level, right, is equal to my item level, let's say my item level was 20, a level 20 monster drop this, and my Q level is 7, right? So one half of 7 is 3.5, which gets rounded down to 3.0 flat. That means that my affix level, my A level, is 17. So why is that so important? Well, let's say this was a pair of boots. Let's say this is a pair of boots, right? Let's go look at affixes, which are available uh, specifically on boots. So the vigorous, so this is an affix, right? The vigorous boots, which at 21 to 30 maximum stamina, are available on rare or crafted and magic boots that have a minimum affix level of 16. Well, since we have an affix level of 17, that means that we could get maximum stamina on our boots. What if I have another example of something from boots? Uh, okay, shock, right? So boots, boots of shock, right? It is available on rare and magic boots with a minimum affix level of 50. But since we did our calculations and our affix level is only 17, we wouldn't be able to roll this lightning damage affix on a pair of boots. So that's why item level, Q level, and affix level are so important to understand. You need to know what affix level you're looking for, which means that you need to know that the item that you make will have a minimum affix level. So that's like a little bit deeper, right? But it goes even further than that. If you want to be able to craft items at the lowest possible level, what that means is you want a really, really low quality level so that if we look back at this equation, the Q level won't subtract a lot from your I level, meaning that your affix level, what affix can be on the item, are as close to the level of the monster that dropped the item as possible. That goes a little bit deeper, but it goes even deeper than that. So if we look back at this equation, you know, we, we were talking earlier about, well, you want to be level 92 to roll amulets. Why is that the case? Well, this equation, and I'll break it down again over here, basically says when you craft an item, the things that don't change, the base item that it is, so if it's a Carnage Helmet, it will stay a Carnage Helmet. In Project Diablo 2, if it's Ethereal, it will stay Ethereal. It won't lose its Ethereal quality. And the Q level of the base item never changes because that's inherent to the item itself. Everything else changes. So the item level is going to be recalculated according to a formula, which I'll show you. What staff mods are on it, if it is a class specific item, are gonna re-roll, uh, and what affixes are on it. When you wanna calculate the new item level, so of your crafted item, this is equal to one half of C level. Uh, this is your character's level. Plus one half of the base item level. One half of the base item. So if I had, you know, a level 50 eye level carnage helmet, and I put it into this equation, and I'm level 50, it takes one half of my level, which would be 25, and one half of the original item level, which is 25. Put those two together, that'll give us a new item level of 50, right? But it also rounds down. Right? So it's not just take your level, take the item level, add them together and cut it in half. You have to cut each one in half individually because each one could round differently. Why is this so important? Well, this is so important because that Q level remains constant. You know, so if your Q level is 20, the higher level you are and the higher level the base item is, 
the higher affix level at the end of the calculation you're going to end up with. So again, so I said, I said I was level 50. Let's say the base eye level, let's say it was 70. Right, so that's 25 plus 35. Our new eye level, the new eye level becomes 60, right? So 25 plus 35. But this base item has a Q level of 30. Oh, geez. So we put that back into our original calculation. So this thing's affix level is going to be 60 minus one half the Q level. So its affix level, this thing's affix level, is only going to be 45. Even though, you know, I was high level and the item was level 70 when it started, its new eye level is lower because I'm lower level than the item, or vice versa. And the affix level is only 45. So even though this thing was super high level, it can only roll with affixes that are available up to level 45. Okay, that's all we have to do there to fully understand the items that we're using as their base, the inherent Q level, I level and why it's important, and how affix level gets calculated, right? There's one more part to it. Crafted items have a scale range, a stepped scale range of how many affixes it will roll with. And that's this bit of information right here. So, if the newly crafted item's eye level is between 1 and 30, the majority of the time it'll only have one affix on it, so it will roll with 5 fire resistance, let's say. There's a 20% chance that it will come with 2, 3, or 4 affixes. At each tier, it becomes more likely of you getting a higher number of affixes and releases the lowest possible outcome. And at tier four or the final tier, anything which generates with an item level of 71 or more will always have four affixes. That's not always the best case. When we were talking about affixes, it's not just knowing that your item can have this affix because it meets the minimum affix level. Your item can have all of the affixes. If you were to go through this entire list, you would realize just how many affixes are available, and when the game rolls one of them, that takes up one of your slots. I could roll a prefix and three suffixes. I could roll three prefixes and one suffix. I could roll two prefixes and two suffixes. There's no way to control that. It's, that part of it is completely random. If we were to go through this whole list, you would realize how many terrible prefixes and suffixes could roll on the item. And the higher affix level that you are, the more things that you could get. Well, it's typically the higher level something gets, the better it gets, right? But let's go look at this calculator again. Let's say all I cared about was attack rating. If you go through here, there are a couple different things that give attack rating, right? There are a couple different types of affixes which give attack rating. All of these here are prefixes, and they get grouped into different sets. So you can get one of these and one of these, but you can never get two of these, right? Uh, but again, let's say we only wanted attack rating. The maximum level for flat attack rating is affix level 24. Right? And then here, for attack rating and enhanced damage, it's maximum level 48. Anything that gives an attack rating, they're all prefixes, and there are one, two, three, four groups. Lightning damage has a minimum level of 66. My attack rating versus undead, maximum level or minimum level is 27. Attack rating versus demons, minimum level 33. My attack rating here, minimum level 48. And attack rating here, minimum level 24. Generating an item above level 48 affix level doesn't do me any good. This is what I mean by trying to target the affixes that you want. I will always get four affixes with a item level of 71 plus, 
when I generate my crafted item. But if I roll with an item level of 50, that means that I'm hitting the minimum level to get all of the affixes that I actually want. And since there is a chance, a 20% chance of me getting four affixes on this item, it may be that it's actually more efficient for crafting items that will hit a maximum item level of 50. Even though I have less of a chance of getting four affixes, I have a much smaller pool of total affixes to pick from. That's why the calculator is so important. Uh, obviously you can go through and do this all by hand, but you would spend a lot of time doing that. The calculator will go through and show you, according to what you select here, what the chances of you getting that item are. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to pick the base item, right? It will calculate what the affix level of the base item is and also allow you to put in item level range here. And you can also pick according to crafting. Need to pay attention to the item level, the specific affixes that we're looking at. We need to know the Q level of the item. Uh, that's why, you know, certain barbarian helmets might be really good for crafting and other ones might be really bad for crafting because some uh, barbarian helmets will have really high Q levels, which will drastically reduce our affix level, meaning we can't get those really GG crafts on it. Poof. What else do we need to know? Well, you also need to understand what the individual crafting pieces do and why PD2 is so much better at crafting than vanilla D2. So there are four different types of craftable items. They are the safety items, so these will typically have additions to blocking, resistances, and defense. There are the caster items. Caster items have the coveted faster cast rate, but they also have regen mana, base mana, uh, they'll have increased maximum mana. There are the blood items. Blood items have three very notable things, which are deadly strike as one of the mods that can roll on it crushing blow and also chance to open wounds and then typically we'll also have enhanced damage life steal and life as uh, static affixes which will roll on the item and then you have hit power hit power is a weirdly named it's more like get hit power uh, so it has chance to cast frost nova when struck it has attacker takes damage it has knockback on gloves, which is actually really good for boazons. And then it has stuff like hit recovery, chance to make monster flee. The way that a crafted item works is it will have these effects. they called fixed effects. These are basically static affixes or static stats that will always be on the item. So if I make a crafted helmet, that's hit power, it will always roll some value of defense first missiles, chance to cast frost nova, and attacker takes damage. It will then go through all the calculations that we've covered and then randomly generate affixes of the newly crafted items. Just to show you a couple examples of the items that we have crafted. So we crafted a blood great pylum. It's an ethereal great pylum. It rolled with the enhanced damage from blood, which is static, life steal from blood, which is static, life from blood, which is static. And in addition to that, it rolled with attack rating. So that's one affix, poison damage, that's one affix, Mana Leech, that's another affix, and then increased stack size. So even though this item was item level 47, which means it is a tier three, it rolled with four affixes. But this is something that a lot of people know about outside of the caster amulets and caster rings, right? This is really great. It adds enhanced damage as a flat modifier, so this will always be there. And then it could also have enhanced damage. It could have plus enhanced damage and attack rating, and all these will stack. It could have Fool's Mod, right? And then it can have flat damage on it as well. So this thing could have insane damage on it because we crafted it. You also have, uh, we made a caster helmet for our Barbarian. The reason why we made helmet is because it has Mana Steel on it, which is a really good affix for a melee character. And then this item rolled with two staff mods which rolled plus three to Warcry, which would be pretty cool if we're actually using this on a caster, and then plus two to Natural Reds, which is actually just nice to have all around them. So this is just kind of a smattering of the things that you can build. How does crafting an item actually work? Well, you take a magic base, so any magic base according to what your uh, particular crafted recipe is. So let's say we're making a hit power helm. In vanilla D2, you would have to use either a full helm, a bassinet, or a giant conch. But in Project Diablo 2, as long as it is a helmet, and not a circlet. A circlet isn't considered a helmet, it's a different class of gear. 
any other helmet that you could wear, you could use in this recipe. So that's why I was able to make a barbarian helmet crafted piece. You can't normally do that in vanilla Diablo 2. You take that, you take an Ith rune, a perfect sapphire in any jewel. It could be a magic jewel, it could be a rare jewel, it could be a rainbow facet. It doesn't care about the jewel at all, and the jewel doesn't impart any identity onto the item that gets made. Put that into a Haradric cube, you transmute, and you will now have a crafted item. You can put stacks of items inside of the cube, so if you know you need perfect amethyst and Ral runes, you can put a stack of 50 each in there, and then all you have to do is put in a magic item in a jewel, transmute, and then, you know, quick swap between your inventory however you see fit, right? Crafted items can be the most powerful items in the game that have specific stats that you're looking for. It's not going to roll with, you know, 100 deadly strike. That's not an affix. But it can have three different forms of enhanced damage and three different forms of flat damage. Or it could have, you know, uh, two forms of flat damage and all res and hit recovery. It can generate all of these really cool stats, which, if utilized in an intelligent way, means that you could generate some of the biggest damage dealing or highest survivability items that the game has seen. This becomes even more apparent when we start talking about ethereal items and the fact that PD2 allows you to upgrade like you normally could in vanilla Diablo 2 on rare items, you're able to upgrade the base of a crafted item as well. So what do I mean by that? The Roderick Cube has four recipes that allow you to upgrade from normal to exceptional to elite versions of the base item and this works for armor and for weapons and while doing it on an armor will get you additional defense it'll also drastically increase the requirements for it so nine times out of ten you don't really want to upgrade except in belts increasing the base item quality of a belt from normal to exceptional to elite will increase the number of belt rows that you have being able to upgrade from a normal to an exceptional to an elite for a weapon is huge. The increase in stat requirements vastly is outweighed by the increase in base damage. Because again, we're talking about ethereal weapons here. When talking about ethereal weapons, you already have that plus 50% base damage increase from the ethereal property. Then you're going to increase to it the elite version of a weapon. And then you're going to roll at least minimum up to 60 enhanced damage from making a blood weapon. And then be able to roll four more affixes, which can all add an uh, enhanced damage or flat damage to the weapon itself. The possibilities for top end damage on ethereal crafted weapons is bonkers. Like the numbers are astronomical. They're absolutely ridiculous. You can begin crafting ethereal based weapons at much lower item levels than you typically would. If you're looking for targeted affixes, you don't need to have a item level 87 site or a, a, you know, giant thresher right you can start off with like an item level 60 ethereal scythe and if it rolls with amazing affixes you are then able to go and upgrade the base so you can start crafting earlier in the game and keep crafted pieces relevant for longer the last thing that i'll go over is that if we're if we're talking about throwing weapons we only get to do one of things one of these things you also get to slam your crafted weapons. It's like you would slam a unique or a really good rare ring or a set piece. You can slam crafted weapons. The reason why slamming on crafted weapons is so important is because crafted weapons can really only roll stats, right? Enhanced damage, flat damage, uh, plus to health. These kinds of things are all, I'll call them base stats or stats that increase in linear ways or do not add additional properties to a weapon. It's not like Deadly Strike or Critical Strike or um, Knockback or anything like this. Slamming can get you into those types of stats. So you could slam a weapon and have it minus enemy poison resistance, which might be really important on a Javazon. Being able to upgrade ethereal crafted weapons and then able to slam them, and if they're non-throwing weapons, being able to Larzic puzzle boxes them opens up such a huge field of possibilities for these items. That means in each continuous season, as long as they don't change this, you're gonna see people replacing staple, you know, legendary GG best in slot weapons with some truly ridiculous crafted weapons. One of the most important things to note is that one of the affixes, which is available 
on magic and rare and crafted items is repairs durability. That's not just something you can get on unique weapons. So there's nothing stopping you from crafting some ridiculous two-hander to use on an Act 2 or Act 5 mercenary, and then it rolls with repairs durability, and you realize that this is something that you get to use. Oh, the, it's truly like the possibilities are, in, are actually endless, and I'm so excited for it. So if you want to dive into crafting and you're not exactly sure which ones to go for, you're not exactly sure what things are really important for you or what can be really good, I'm just going to go ahead and highlight some here that are, are just really, really powerful. Um, some of these obviously you're already going to know about, but some of these not a lot of people necessarily look at. Hit power gloves. The most important thing that they say there is knockback. Now, knockback is pretty self-explanatory. When you hit something, it knocks them back. Why is this so important? Well, let's say you're a bow is on. Let's say you want gloves that say plus two to bow and crossbow skills, 20% increased attack speed, knockback, dual res, and magic find. You can craft that with hip power gloves. That's something that you can make. So rather than trying to shop, you know, for 220 gloves from Vanilla Diablo 2, which is very common, you can just craft your gloves knowing that you're going to get at least one useful benefit, which is knockback, and then have all those other benefits on it as well. That's a really, really good item. And you'll see like elite Boazons and even some Javazons using stuff like this because of how powerful it is on stuff like multi-shot, right? Blood, blood is really well known. Everybody has always kind of talked about, ooh, I'll make an ethereal berserker axe blood craft, which is absolutely fantastic. It's a great idea. The other things that are really good from blood. So having deadly strike on a blood helm is really powerful. That gives you a chance to deal double physical damage of your base damage, right? Crushing blow on gloves. This is really well known in the speedrunning community. Um, and also you can make a budget smiter with crushing blow gloves, right? Open wounds on belt is one of the unsung heroes. It's incredibly powerful for uh, fighting high level bosses, especially if you are a slightly lower level. Just having the base bleed going the entire time will also stop regening uh, for monsters, right? So you actually stop super high regens. This is something that's really cool on people like uh, Diablo clone. Faster run walk on a blood amulet. This is something that actually gets used for crafting really high level Amazon amulets. Um, if you're looking for lifesteal and you want run walk because you're a bow is on and you're trying to clear through maps quicker, something like a blood amulet is really good. And then lifesteal on a blood ring, having two sets of minimum lifesteal on it means that you're more likely to have a rare ring, a crafted item, that will also have dual leech, and then this is really good on any melee uh, damage dealing character. Caster, I feel like people have talked about this to death. Obviously the most important caster role is the caster amulet. Since it can roll 10 faster cast rate here as a fixed aff affix, you can also get 10 faster cast rate as a base affix on an amulet. And that's where you get those two to skill 20 FCR amulets that also have dual res and strength and dexterity and all the stuff that your really high level and, and high profile sorceresses and paladins are using. Okay, in all honesty, all I was gonna talk about was safety amulet here, but somebody in chat actually brought up a really good point, which is the safety shield as well. Uh, so a safety amulet gives you plus chance to block, uh, meaning that you could have a two to paladin, 10 to FCR, 10% chance to block amulet. This is really good, right? So like your hammered in can use something like this, your hardcore characters, your high level duelers. Another really cool and niche use of safety is something like a safety shield. Why is safety shield so good? It says 10% magic resistance. Uh, not only that, you get to roll a Necromancer shield, right? So a Necromancer shield can have plus to three different staff mods. So it could have plus three to bone spirit, plus three to bone spirit, plus three to bone prison, whatever the thing that you're looking for. And it can roll plus two to Necromancer levels, or it can roll plus two to poison and bone if that's the only thing that you care about, plus two to curses if that's the only thing that you care about. So something, anything where you have like a class shield, like a paladin shield could also roll something like this, where you roll maximum all res and then magic resistance on top of it and then plus to paladin skills and then additional resistances on top of that as well um, a safety shield and a safety amulet are both things that are very niche utilizations but could also lead to some of the much more powerful items in the game now that you can craft with whatever you want in project diablo 2